In this tutorial, we're going to try to get a sense of scale of various things just in our solar system. Um, Alright, so the first part we're going to look at the Earth moon to get a sense of scale for those two. So astronomers often deal with large numbers for distances, masses, and other quantities. They often use ratios to get a better sense of how big or small these quantities are. This can be useful in our daily lives as well. For example, we may not have a good sense for the length of a 40 meter long commercial jet, but saying that the jet is approximately eight times longer than a car may be more meaningful to us. In this activity, we'll use ratios to try to better understand the size of objects in the solar system, in particular, the size of the sun. Distances such as the following can be hard to conceptualize. So the moon's diameter, 3,476 kilometers. Earth's diameter, 12,756 kilometers. Probably not gonna memorize those, but we can think about these sizes in terms of one another so that we can create a scale model of the Earth and the moon in our minds. If we wish to express how many times bigger Earth is than the moon, we can divide Earth's diameter by the moon's diameter. The result is roughly four. This means that Earth is approximately four times wider than the moon, or equivalently, you could fit four moons across the diameter of the Earth, as shown. One, two, three, four. So which of the following pairs of objects would make a good scale model of the Earth and the moon? So a basketball and a soccer ball, those are about the same size. Basketball and a baseball, that doesn't seem too bad. Basketball and a ping pong ball. Ping pong ball is pretty small compared to a basketball. It's more than four times smaller. And then even worse for a pea, and definitely worse for a grain of sand. So, which of the following pairs of objects could make a good scale model for the Earth and the Moon? Basketball and a baseball. Not too far off. So the distance between Earth and the Moon is much larger than either the Moon or Earth. But how much larger? If we divide the distance between Earth and the Moon, so 384,000 kilometers, by Earth's diameter, we will get 384,400 divided by 12,756. It's about 30. This means that you could fit approximately 30 Earths in the space between the Earth and the Moon. Using small circles to represent the Earth and the Moon, sketch a scale model of the Earth-Moon orbital system below. Be sure your scale model correctly shows the two scale ratios described above. So I'm going to need to have one circle that is a given size and the other one is either four times bigger or four times smaller. So we want this to fit on the page, so let's say four times smaller. And I need to separate those two circles by 30 diameters of the larger circle. So I'm not going to actually get out a, a ruler to do this, I and mean, you can. Um, but if I use that to be the Earth, I'm going to need a circle that's about four times smaller to be the Moon, and I need there to be about 30 of those distances across. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's about a third. So it might not be great, but that's not too bad. So it's roughly the size and length scale to simultaneously represent how big the Earth is compared to the Moon and their correct distances apart. Alright, let's try some other options. To make a scale model of the Earth-Moon orbital system, you not only need to pick appropriately sized objects to represent Earth and the Moon, you also need to place them uh, the correctly scaled distance apart. Let's say you use a 1 foot, so 12 inch basketball, and a 3 inch orange as your Earth and Moon respectively. And that works out because 3 times 4 is 12. 
So you fit approximately four oranges across the basketball. About how far apart must they be placed to represent an accurate scale model of the Earth moon orbital system? Well, we just worked out in the previous part that I need to have 30 Earths fit between the Earth and the Moon. So if the Earth is being represented by something that is a foot, I'm going to need to separate my orange and my basketball by 30 feet. That way 30 Earths fit in between the Earth and the Moon. Alright, now we're going to start looking at the Sun. Compared to the size of the Earth, the Sun, with a diameter of 1,392,000 kilometers, is about 110 times bigger than Earth. So 1,392,000 divided by 12,756 is going to give us about 110. Now question 4. Can any combinations of the following items be used to make an accurate scale model of Earth and the Sun? If so, which two would you choose and why? If not, why not? All right, so I'm going to need something big and something small. So let's think about this. If I picked the basketball, it's about the same size as the soccer ball, if I pick that, I need to find something that is going to be 110 times smaller. Well, baseball is not 110 times smaller, nor is a ping pong ball. So let's look at a P. A P, I guess roughly is about a quarter of an inch across. So across a foot, that's 48. So about 50 P's across the basketball. So we're off by about a factor of two from this 110. So basketball and P is not going to work. Grain of sand. Grain of sand is really small. It's hard for uh, me to think of something I could use with a grain of sand that would represent uh, if the grain of sand is the earth and what could represent the sun. This is very, very, very small. Tiny fraction of an inch. So for out of that actual set of choices, I don't see a good combination to make uh, a solar system, at least starting with a basketball. What you can actually do, this is because I do this as a demonstration, I take a baseball, and then on that scale, how big is the Earth? The Earth is about as big as a grain of sand sort of a big grain of sand, but those work out together. And the grain of sand is about a hundred times smaller than the baseball. All right, now let's compare the sun's diameter to the size of the moon's orbit around Earth. The diameter of the moon's orbit around Earth is about 789,000 kilometers across. So the ratio of the sun's diameter to the moon's orbital diameter is roughly 2, meaning 1,392,000 divided by 769,000 is about 2. All right, does this mean that two suns placed side by side would fit inside the moon's orbit around Earth, or that two moon orbits placed side by side would fit across the sun? All right, what that does mean is that two lunar orbits fit inside the sun. All right, so limited artistic abilities. That's our sun. What we're saying is fit one, two, Earth, moon. All right, a few more questions. The distance between the Earth and the Sun averages about 150 million kilometers. No, 150 billion kilometers, sorry. 
usually do this in scientific notation. So seeing this written out uh, in decimal form is unusual. All right, this makes the distance between the sun and the earth about 110 times larger than the diameter of the sun. So 150 billion divided by 1,392,000 is about 110 again. If we were to use a one foot, so 12 inch basketball to represent the sun, how far would it have to be from the earth to be an accurate uh, scale model? Well, I have to fit 110 earths between the earth and the sun. I mean, say, I have to fit 110 suns between the earth and the sun to get the correct distance between the two objects. So whatever I pick from the sun, 110 of them have to fit between the sun and the earth. So since in this model, the sun is a basketball of 12 inches, it needs to be 110 feet between the earth and the sun. If we used a basketball to represent the sun and a ping pong ball to represent earth and separated them by the distance you answered in question six, so 110 feet, would we have an accurate scale model of the Sun-Earth system? Explain your answer. And no, it is not completely to scale because I also need to have uh, 110 be how many of the Earths fit across the Sun. And that is not captured by ping pong ball and basketball. So the ping pong ball is way too big to represent the earth if the sun is a basketball. So the ping pong ball is too big. All right, how many moons would fit across the diameter of the sun? Okay, so let's go back. So how many earths fit across the diameter of the sun? That was 110. Um, and the moon, four moons fit across the earth. So how many moons would fit across the diameter of the sun? Four times 110 would be 440. Approximately how many times could the moon's orbital diameter fit between earth and the sun? So 110 suns fit between the earth and the sun and each sun could fit two lunar orbital diameters. So instead of being 110 suns, it would be 220 orbits of the moon would fit between the Earth and the sun. So a few little exercises to give you some insight into the scale of things. I mean, it's good to have sort of in the back of your mind that like 30, Earths fit between the Earth and the Moon, 110 suns fit between the Earth and the Sun. Um, give it a sense of scale for, for how big things are. We'll also talk about this in terms of how many stars would fit between two typical stars in the Milky Way galaxy, and then how far apart are two galaxies compared to the size of galaxies.